Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today is Wednesday. So it's another live paper crafting class day here on Facebook on my, let's find it here. Did I do the right one? I did. <laughs> you are at Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel on Facebook right now and I'm so glad that you joined me. It's uh, Wednesday, June 17th at 11 a.m. Central Time. So just convert that to your time zone and that's where you're at. Um, I have a really fun idea to show you today. We have these wonderful kits in our catalog. We've had them for a few years now and they're just, they're an awesome way for a beginner to get started. They're an awesome way for someone who wants to craft on the go, um, to, to do something while they're on vacation or whatever. I love kits. Kits are incredible. Um, so I'm going to introduce to you one of our um, more basic kits. It's called an all-inclusive kit and the name of it is called Citrus Twist. Before I do that though, I want to welcome all of you one more time and let you know that if you do comment, if you um, even just say hello and tell me where you're from, you're getting entered into a prize drawing that I will do live at the end of this broadcast. Um, I've chosen some winners from last week's uh, broadcast as well. Uh, one from Facebook, Facebook and one from the YouTube. Um, so I have two more winners to share with you today as well from last week's video. So I draw one live and then I draw um, two more from comments that occur within the week afterwards. So you have plenty of chances to get in on that drawing. I'm loving that I'm seeing lots of familiar names coming up again. Thank you everyone for coming back to spend um, some time with me again today. So I hope you enjoy what I have to share. First of all, I'm gonna bring you to my desktop and just adjusting some cameras here. There we go. So I wanna to introduce to you this kit called um, Citrus Twist and it's found on pages 12 and 13 of the beginner brochure, which is what this is. I just lost my page on the other one. Hang on, <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. There we go. So there is Citrus Twist. I can find it. I'll look for it again. It's an all-inclusive kit, which means that it comes with the stamps and a clear block and an ink pad, everything that you need except for maybe a scissors and a ruler, okay? And so um, it's shown in the beginner brochure. This is a brochure that people who are new to stamping would get, uh, get a lot out of because it's got some basic stuff in it. Um, it's not as overwhelming as this multi-page catalog here. But now let me show it to you in this catalog because you can also find our kit called Simply, I'm um, sorry, Simply Citrus. Did I call it Citrus Twist? <laughs> Hang on just a minute. It's the same kit. Simply Citrus. I called it the wrong thing. <laughs> I'll have to change that in the, in the description that I put in the video. Why did I call it Citrus Twist? Anyways, it's called Simply Citrus. <laughs> And, and it's shown here also on page seven in the main catalog. You can see the components of it. You can see what it makes. In fact, I'm gonna take that image and show it to you really large now because that's the same image that is on the cover that you get in the direction pamphlet in the booklet. Before we begin, let's go to our measurement section though. So I'm gonna take and uh, adjust some cameras here and bring you over to my computer. So um, these are the measurements and there's a lot that's because we are going to triple the kit. We're gonna take that kit today and we're going to expand it. Because it's all inclusive, you, you make 15 cards with it and then you're done. You can buy another kit, but then you're buying another stamp set, you're buying another ink spot, you know. So this is to make, make this kit spread a little bit further. So we're gonna triple the kit. <laughs> Citrus twist. I gotta change that, sorry. I don't know where that came from. Hmm. Anyways, you can make 45 cards instead of just 15, because that's tripling it. And this is what you need to cut to make 45 cards. We're only gonna do a third of those cards today. We're gonna make 15 of them from five, because if you take that kit, it's got, it's got three sets of five different cards. So we're gonna take one of those sets of five and we're going to reposition all those pieces along with some Whisper White cardstock and some envelopes, some added envelopes, and then we're going to make those cards. These are the extra supplies that you would need need. So you'd need the, uh, 
Simply Citrus kit. You would need Whisper White cardstock and envelopes. You'd need, um, well, you don't necessarily need these, but they do make them a lot better. The Artistry Blooms self-adhesive sequins. And then um, a couple tools like the two-inch circle punch, the trimmer, the paper snips, and um, a ruler is going to be helpful. These are things that it's going to make it easier for me to demonstrate with. So I'm going to bring out the bone folder, the take your pick tool, um, some seal adhesive. Uh, you could use seal or seal plus. I like the tape runner adhesives. And then um, I'm bringing in my Knight of Navy ink pad that is larger in size because it's going to be easier to demonstrate with and my own ergonomic clear blocks that you can get in the online store. So <laughs> thanks, Lorraine. She said, I love it when you triple the kits. I love to do this because it really makes a kit go a lot further by just adding some, some basic supplies. And um, okay, so let's move now to the table again. And... Um, You'll notice in those supplies, if you if you looked back on them or you took a screenshot or whatever, and again, these will be on my blog in just a couple days, but uh, there are seven envelopes that I did not use. So five of the Mango Melody ones and five of the Printed Fruit ones, I did not use from the kit. So seven of those plus another 38 from a pack of Whisper White cardstock will give you the 45 envelopes you need. Um, okay, so let's start with Whisper White cardstock and our trimmer. And that's the one thing I put away. Good thing I have everything handy, right? Okay, so you're gonna need four 15 cards. You're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half pieces of Whisper White cardstock. So we're gonna take and we're gonna score. <clears throat> at the five and a half inch mark for how many of those? We're gonna do that for, what's 27 divided by three? Nine, nine cards, right? One, two, three. <laughs> I'm already gonna get screwed up on the math. Okay, hang on, 27, yes, so I have to change this out to a different piece. Okay, so 27, yes, nine and a half. So this will make two, so we're gonna take and we're gonna score it this direction um, 11 scored in half is five and a half. So we're going to put a score line here. We're going to do that with how many more? Three more pieces. So we have eight because each of these is going to make two. So we're doing all the scoring first. And hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to take this one and replace it. Silly me. We need one of these instead. <clears throat> we need a half of one of these this direction instead. There we go. Okay, and then one more will give us our ninth one. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take and cut these in this direction like I just did with that one. So we're going to cut at four and a quarter inches because that's half of eight and a half. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And go right up to that line right there. It's pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty fast, right? Oh, thank you. Who said that? Diana, thanks. Um, I like to match. <laughs> I like to match my my cards and stuff so I, I wore this really bright um, cheerful it's got some calypso coral and kind of a navy color in it and then there's yellow in the kit too because of the lemons um, well it's more of a mango mango yellow but um yeah so I thought I'd wear this today <laughs> thank you sister my sister Renee gave it to me okay the other pieces we are going to go the opposite way with so we're gonna score in this direction so we're gonna score using our light gray blade we're gonna score in half which would bring it to the four and a quarter mark and we're gonna do that to 18 divided by 3 is 6 so we're gonna do it to three of these pieces because that will make six so one two three and then when we cut those in half so we're going to cut at the five and a half inch mark 
we're going to have two, four, and six. Okay, so now we have our 15 card bases. We have six that are cut and scored this way, and we have <clears throat> nine that are cut and scored this way. Okay. Let's um, actually, we're going to move that trimmer just off to the side because now we're going to bring in these pieces. These pieces here are the, uh, the um, items that you would need if you were going to take and make five of the cards in the kit. Okay, so here are the five card bases that you'd normally play around with, right? Here are the beautiful flower little embellishments that you get in it. Here are those little label pieces that you get. There's like four that are printed like that. There are two that look like banners that are um, colorful, so a navy and a garden green one. And then you have um, a few that are like sentiment pieces that have kind of a faux stitching on them. They're actually printed. They're not actually stitched through. They just have a printed look to them. Actually, it's kind of embedded in there, I guess. It's not really... Maybe, it, yeah, it's just embedded in there. It's not um, stitched all the way through. And then you have these two little guys. Um, and then we have, like I said, you'll need two of the printed uh, fruit envelopes and one of the mango envelopes. So we're gonna grab these pieces right now and we're gonna cut them. We're gonna shove those little, little ones off to the side and we're gonna cut the envelopes and we're gonna cut the card bases. So we're going to bring the trimmer back in. Let's start with the envelopes. I like to trim, oops, use the dark blade. I like to trim the edges off of each side so it's easier to cut the envelopes like this. Okay, once they're open, they're easier to cut. And we're going to cut right up to this mark. You can go a little bit inward into that print. So we're gonna do that. So you can see I did a little bit of extra printing there just to be on the safe side. And then we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna cut there at four inches. Okay, so now we have a four inch wide piece here. And then we're gonna trim off this end and you can go a little bit in. And then we're gonna to cut to five and a quarter inches. You can see when I said you can go a little bit in, you can, but not very much on those edges because they're, they're pretty much printed right to four and a quarter inches, okay? So this is four, I'm sorry, five and a quarter inches. So this is four inches and this is five and a quarter. We're gonna do that with our other envelope. Okay, so how is everyone today? <laughs> My sister gave me this top, Jill. She's commenting on the top as well. Um, my sister is really good at dressing up. She has some really nice clothes. So, and it's funny, she's older than me by a year and a half, but we were about the same size growing up. So um, she, like I, well not about the same size. A little, I was a little bit smaller of course, because I was a year and a half smaller. But I'd get her hand-me-downs and I'd get to wear them for whatever time and I, I loved it. I actually was one of those kids that loved getting the hand-me-downs because my sister would go shopping with my mom. They'd pick out all these clothes and my sister had good taste. <laughs> so I loved it. Sometimes I got my own clothes too. I mean, my mom wasn't mean to me or anything, but, <laughs> but it was really nice to have all of those clothes that I knew what they looked like. I didn't have to sit and try them on in the stores. It was great. And she's still doing that with me. She's still giving me her hand-me-downs. It's so awesome. <laughs> Oh. oh well anyways okay so now that we've trimmed our envelope pieces all to that same size four inches by five and a quarter inches these layers are ready and we can set them aside what do we need from our envelopes we need one of these flaps so we're gonna put that aside actually we're gonna trim that with our scissors a little bit and then we need these three pieces here because they're white on both sides and we're gonna stamp on them. These two pieces, um, I don't, yeah, we don't use them. 
So we, we can toss them or you can use them for maybe a 46th card if you want, okay? We'll set those aside and now we're gonna cut the card bases. So this one here is one that we'll start off with right away and we're gonna cut right on the score line for most of these. So where the printed section meets the solid section, we're gonna cut right there. On this one, we're gonna cut in half this way. So half of five and a half inches is two and three quarter inches. So we're gonna cut right there. And then on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut at two and three quarter inches. Now I noticed one thing, uh, oh, it actually cut pretty well on that one. I'll show you on one that I don't cut really well on because they don't have to be exact, but you want to get them pretty close. So let's cut this one next. And actually, here, I know what I'm going to do because I'm going to cut this one. This one's going to be, um, i trying to remember here, this is the jade one. So this one's going to be four and an eighth inches. So we're going to have this one be a layer on top of a whisper white card. So you can't toss them. You're right, Ruby. Don't toss them. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so she was talking about those envelope flaps that I just threw off to the side. Don't toss them. All right, so four and an eighth inches. Now you can see I've got this little printed edge here. Um, it's okay if you want to cut just inside on either side of the score line so that you don't have to cut right on it because the measurements don't have to be super precise. This one's going to turn and cut at um, five and three eighths. And so that's gonna be a, a layer for one of our cards. This you could use for another card. <laughs> it's kind of small. Um, but yeah, we're gonna cut this one now and we wanna cut it on the score line, but again, you can cut just inside of it so that you're not exactly on that measurement mark. In fact, here, let me zoom in a tad so you can see that closer. You can see this is the mark that you wanna come to, but if you're getting some of that printed, um, printed side of the card on there. Just adjust it a bit, it's totally fine. So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna turn this and cut this in half at two and three quarter inches, okay? We're gonna do the same with this one. So we're gonna go to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, another little scrap. And then this one will trim off the excess. And then we'll turn it and trim this way at two and three quarter inches. This may turn out to be a longer video. <laughs> okay, these two are unique. We're gonna cut them a little bit different. We're gonna cut so that we have, um, I think it's three inches in. Let me look at my measurements here. For the Garden Green and the Mango Melody, we're gonna cut, yeah, there we go. Okay, three inches in. So we're gonna cut three inches in this way, which is going to leave us five and a half inches on this side. Do you see that? Because five and a half plus three is eight and a half inches, which is the total width of that card base. So we're gonna do that with each of these. We're gonna cut this one at three inches. And now we have front layers for our cards out of that. These two, we have five and a half inches wide now, just like this piece was. And we're gonna cut them in half. So in half would be two and three quarters, we've learned from our other cards that we've done, right? So two and three quarters. All right, we're gonna move this aside now. I don't think we need the trimmer anymore. Let's start pulling all these pieces in. So now that we've got all of those pieces cut, we can start to put some cards together. Let me grab my stamps. These are the stamps you're gonna use. And I'm gonna grab my, my ink and my tools. Everything kinda of got shoved way far away. <laughs> All right, we got it all over here. And I need some blocks. I need blocks for my stamps. All right, so let's just peel off the backing from this. 
The only stamp I did not use in this whole entire thing was this set of three little flowers. I could have used it, I just didn't. So we'll set up all of these. In fact, we'll just lay them on the table like this. I like to put them um, stamp image side down, flat smooth side up, like that. And then we'll just take, we'll start with a big block here and we'll pick them up. This one needs a big block. I like to I like to mount my stamps on my block kind of diagonally so that I'm not relying on the edges of my block to give me a false notion of what's straight and what isn't. Um, this one could use a, a block like that. So this is, I'm using um, C, let's see, blocks B, C, and D. Uh, this one will use a C. We'll use a B on this one, and we could use a, actually I'm gonna use a larger one because I really wanna make sure I can see around that whole, that whole thing. And then we're using the larger ink pad. So since this kit is geared towards beginning stampers, and some of you may be beginning stampers, or you may see this video afterwards and say, I can do this, I just wanna give a little tip for new ink pads. This is one of my newer ink pads. It's called Cinnamon Cider. It's a new color this year. And what I have not done yet is I haven't put the um, labels on my pad. So you get this sticky sheet of labels here and you have it in, it looks like four different um, languages. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take this one cause it's in English and I speak English. <laughs> And I'm just gonna lay that on the bottom like that. And then on the inside of my pad, I have another little spot right in here. And there's one label on here that doesn't actually have any printing on it. And I'm going to set that right inside there as an indicator so that when my ink pads are open, I can see, <laughs> I can see what color I'm using. We'll just lick that. They're non-toxic inks, right? <laughs> All right, so that's how you do labels on your ink pads. When you have your ink pad, you just lift it like a compact and you just lift it up like that and it actually slides into the base. Okay. Oh, you know what? We could use some scrap paper. I didn't add this to the list, but we have um, grid paper, they call it, in a couple different kinds. We have this floral grid paper, so I think I'll, st I'll use that today. All right, so here we go. Let's start, with, um, let's start with our first card. We'll just grab from one of these pieces here. We're gonna use that one. We're going to use an envelope leftover, and we're gonna use that navy piece here along with a vertical card base. So we're gonna fold it in half. Not necessary tool, but a bone folder really helps to make sharp creases, so you wanna do that. And then for this, we're just gonna layer this piece onto this piece. Super simple, super easy. You can use the glue dots that come in the kit. Let me show you. Oh, here they are. They look like this. You actually get some adhesive in this kit too. You get plenty of it. You get like a full sheet of these glue dots and you get a full sheet of these um, dimensionals. In fact, why don't I keep them handy right there in case I need them. Okay, so now we're gonna take and we're gonna put this one onto this one. And you could, if you want to, you could trim down your, um, your, your printed one if you wanna have a blue border all the way around it. But I'm just gonna kinda have it like that as if it's a shadow on here, okay? All right, and then we're just gonna put adhesive on the back side of the whole layer, and we're gonna add that to our card like that. If you see me looking off to the side, I'm just looking at my cheat cards, the ones that I've already made, because I there's no, no way I could possibly remember all of these in my head, right? Okay, this one's gonna get the sentiment that says, thanks for being you. So we'll, oh, the way that you ink up your stamp, if you're a beginning crafter, you just pounce real lightly. These are very soft um, pads. And you know what, let's punch first. That's gonna be safer in this case because we have see-through um, stamps. So we're gonna punch out our circle. 
And now we can stamp on this. In fact, it might be easier for you to see if I stamp it so it's not um, on the white paper. <laughs> All right, so there's that. This piece is going to be put up onto dimensionals. In fact, you know what? This sheet was gonna be saved for something else, so hang on. I think, yeah, I have some dimensionals here. I'm gonna use my own dimensionals. So we just put dimensionals on the back. Dimensionals are a foam, um, a foam tape kind of thing that, that give a little bit of lift to your layer. So this will get put down, and I'm gonna just stick that right in the middle like that. Is that straight? <laughs> I think it is. I hope it looks straight to you guys. Okay, when I look at things at an angle, it's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> now we're gonna bring in our ruler, and we're gonna measure out 16 inches. So 12 plus four is 16. We're actually gonna do that for four of our 15 cards. So we might as well just do this little trick. Do you guys know this trick where you go back and forth like this? We need four of them. So now we have four that are all the same size. It helps for mass producing. When you're gonna do Christmas cards, you're gonna do a bunch of invitations or whatever, if you do that back and forth thing. So there, we've got our twine cut. And you know what, since we've got this here, we might as well just cut our twine for our fifth card that's gonna have some twine, and that is a 27 inch piece. Making sure I'm saying that right, yep, 27. So 24 plus three is 27. And you should, from one kit, have enough twine to cover all 45 cards if you do it that way. So let's grab one of our 16 inch pieces and I'm just gonna fold it in half. So now I have two eight inch pieces. <laughs> That's okay if you're joining late. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gonna do um, a bow with these like this, if I can get it. My, I'm doing it up in the air so I don't have anything to push, push my hands against. Okay, so I'm doing a bow with my twine and you're gonna have a little extra and that's okay. So we're gonna trim and you can actually trim off any excess that you have that you don't want. And now we have a little bow and we're gonna take our glue dots that were in the kit. I'm gonna grab one of these sheets. I know I have another one of these somewhere. In fact, this one's missing one anyways. Maybe this is the one I used. But we're just gonna grab one of those glue dots. We're gonna put it on the back side of our bow like that. And we're gonna peel off the backing. And then you can take and kind of wind up any excess onto itself and tuck it right up into the card like that. Simple and easy, right? I love this one. This is probably one of my favorites. Okay, so we're gonna do that one kind of again. Only this time, we're gonna use this background piece along with this. We're gonna stamp another um, circle. So let's punch another circle out. And we're gonna stamp it with the same sentiment. We'll do that on the brown surface of the table here so you can see better, like that. We're gonna tie another one of those bows. So if you want to, if it makes it easier for you, you can take and cut into two strands already, you know, like this. And then you think of it as one piece of ribbon or whatever. You can take and do rabbit ears, okay? And then you can just do an overhand knot with those rabbit ears. That might make it easier for you to do a bow, okay? There's different ways. There are so many different ways to do bows. I have a um, video that I made years ago on how to tie knots and, and bows, and I don't know where it is in my YouTube archive, but it's there. But yes, there's constantly um, little tips out there for, for making bows. Okay, I'm gonna even out the legs of my ribbon. We're gonna put a glue dot on the back side. You can see that this tool here, this is the, called the take your pick tool, it's handy. 
It's not a needed tool if you're a beginner, but it's really nice to have for picking up um, small little things like glue dots or sequins or whatever. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So now this bow is ready. These layers are ready. I'm going to need to grab my card base. Bone folder. There we go. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to take and add this piece to this in kind of a um, kind of a crooked way okay so I've just kind of added it like that just for more whimsy more fun this color is so bright and cheerful this calypso coral that I thought it'd be fun to kind of add it that way and then we're just kind of gonna tilt it onto the card like that super easy cards you guys <laughs> I know bows are they are difficult that's why you know if you if you can just get away with knots um, on your cards you can do that too with twine though it's a little bit harder but you know what with twine um, who said that Nancy um, with twine you don't have to worry about like it having it's not as stiff as a ribbon is you know a ribbon has kind of because it's flat on one side uh, or it's flat right and it's and it's wide Twine is just a string, so they're a little bit easier to do bows with. Okay, this one we're gonna put more off to the side, and we're gonna stick this guy underneath like that. Okay, so there's another one. Um, let's see, where am I putting these? <laughs> I think this is the one I just did. Okay, so now, Sorry, I have this pile. I have piles over here, you guys. It's a mess. These are the ones I did. I'm going to put the ones I did up in this corner because I don't want to forget where they're at. Okay, so the next card is going to be done with this piece. And this piece here is where I needed the grid paper for because um, unlike this one, this one, and this one, this one really does need some blue outline to it. Now you have all these stamps in here that in fact this one I don't even use I don't know why I mounted it I didn't use it but you can you can actually stamp over the top of these slices of citrus like oranges and grapefruit or whatever you can slice uh, put a stamp image over the top and it'll make it more um, uh, it's a deeper looking image so that's what they did on these cards here uh, they did not do that to this one and you can see there's no stamping over the top of those I thought this one looked fine without the stamping and it's a lot of lining up to do for my eyes. So I just did it with the lemon layer here. So these pieces, I'm gonna just keep off to the side and I'm gonna grab the lemon and the leaves and we're just going to, you can see there's two different ends to the lemon there. There's one that's more of a um, direct tip and one that's more rounded or curved or whatever. So you just wanna line up those same kind of ends on your lemon. And I'm coming down from the side here, so hopefully I'm getting right on top. And you just stamp over the top. So you can see it's it's pretty easy to get those lined up, even if you're coming in from the side. Now watch, I'll, I'll mess up, right? Okay, so we're gonna do two more of those. And again, it's a clear stamp. These are called photopolymer stamps. So, they are definitely user-friendly <laughs> um, for all kinds of stampers, beginning and more advanced. Okay, so now we've done that, and now we can take and do our leaves. Our leaves also line up with the jade and the garden leaves that are on the printed piece here. I'm just tapping on my stamp pad off to the side. Do you guys have, do you, you can't really see it. It's not in the camera, sorry. This one I did as well. It's There's very little there, but you wanna make sure that you're consistent on all your images. So that's what I did to that layer. We're gonna use this piece. We're gonna use the navy layer, and we're gonna use another vertical card base. Desk is getting messy. <laughs> All of you messy crafters, you should be proud of me. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna go directly down with this piece first onto the front of our card, like this. 
Then we're gonna take that 27 inch twine, so the one that's longer, and I like to hold on to a, a tail end of it, like a part of it, right where I wanna put the bow. And then I wrap and I wrap, and then I have my two ends meet, kind of right where I want them to be, okay? Now, if you have to shift it, that's okay too. You can always shift it later, but as long as you've wrapped it and you've got your your twine evenly positioned, it's not diagonal on the card here, you wanna have it even, then you can take and tie it in a knot first. There's a tip for all of you who don't like to tie bows. For the twine, you can totally tie it in a knot first, and then you can tie your bow. So at this point too, we can kind of shift this over a bit. See how I did that? I curved, I curved my cardstock and then I kind of shifted it where I wanted it. And then we can take and do our bow. And there's that. And then this piece just gets added with dimensionals. And I put one in each corner. You don't necessarily need any more than that, although you can. You can add way more dimensionals if you want to, but this should be plenty. There's little backings or release paper that you pull off your dimensionals, so you wanna make sure that you're doing that. Okay, and then this just gets centered and stuck down like that. Another super quick to put together card, right? So yes, why don't I um, kind of, for those of you that are joining in late, this is called the Simply Citrus um, card kit. I called it Citrus Twist in the thing, sorry. Oops, that one goes over here. Um, Simply Citrus card kit, and we're taking and we're tripling the kit by just adding cardstock. I actually thought that these cards here were very, um, there's a lot of pattern there. They're almost overwhelming to the eye, so I kind of liked um, simplifying them by tripling the kit. All right, so kind of liked, I really liked it. Let's take another vertical base here and our bone folder. Okay, so this one's now ready for some layers. We're gonna use this layer and we're gonna use this layer for it. Before we add this, let's stamp on it. That way, in case you make a mistake, you could technically flip it this way. All right, <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. So let's ink up that stamp and stamp it down here. So let's say I messed that up, okay? It's gonna go on the card like this. If I messed it up, I can cover it. Ha! <laughs> so always stamp before you add a layer. It's just, it's just a wise thing to do. Stamp first, then attach. Okay, now we've got this piece and we're just gonna add that about a fourth of an inch from the bottom of the front of our card base. This piece, we're gonna add with both dimensionals and a tape runner adhesive. So we're gonna add some tape runner adhesive to the top and then we're gonna add dimensionals to the bottom. And it's just gonna give it a look where the, the banner piece is kind of going, you know, like curving upward, kind of like the wind took it. And we're gonna position that about a quarter of an inch from the left side. So you can see that there. This one's also gonna get some twine. For this one, we're gonna use a 16 inch piece. Again, same thing where you fold it in half. Let's do the rabbit ears, that was much easier. Two rabbit ears, just done. did an overhand knot with those two little loops. And then you can adjust the loops by pulling on the tails. Let's trim off any excess. Trim that and trim that. And then we'll take one of our glue dots. And this time we can actually put the glue dot directly onto the card where we want the bow. We could do that with the other ones too. I didn't think of that. <laughs> and then we'll just go like that. Now for this one, I'm gonna bring in, and I don't have a lot of them left because I am loving these and I already ordered some more, but they are not here yet. These are the, these are the Artistry Blooms sequins. They come in those four colors. So there's kind of a purplish, a bluish, a yellowish, and an orangish color in there. 
And uh, yes, I have been loving these. So let's see if we can make them last <laughs> through these cards. I'm gonna take one and put it up here. I'm gonna put another one. I'm using the blue because it kind of looks pretty good with these this jade color here. One there, and let's use another one down there. And that is that finished card. Okay. All right, let's move these off to the side. We are on to, I think this is card number five. We're gonna bring in um, this piece that is garden green in color and has kind of a zebra stripe going through it. And now we're gonna take one of our horizontally card, uh, position card bases, the one that looks like this more so. We're gonna use the bone folder to give it a good crease. This is gonna be put onto our card like that. It's going to also have those two pieces and it's going to use our last envelope flap, here it is here, that we're gonna punch with the circle punch and we're gonna stamp onto. And this time we're gonna use the one that says just a note. This, um, here, it's gonna be easier for me to see too if I put it over here. This card, by the way, has a more masculine look to it, especially if you don't add the sequins. Um, I'm adding a couple sequins that, oh, we don't need to shut that yet. We've got lots of cards left to do. So first, let's take and put some adhesive along the back uh, upper side of this. Doesn't matter which is the um, top and which is the bottom. So we're just gonna run that along here. Kinda lost that adhesive here, hang on. There we go. All right, so we've got a little adhesive going along there. And now we're going to um, we're going to put this piece onto this piece, so that you have about an eighth of an inch of that navy color showing. We're going to trim off the excess like that, okay? And then this piece we can use over here, and we don't need a lot of it. We just need a peak of it, <laughs> a peak, just a tiny bit just so it peeks, peeks out. We'll trim that off. And this we're going to use as well. Okay, so we've got that on there. This is not covered here because we're gonna put the circle over that. So let's add this to the front of our card. Um, put a little bit more adhesive on these corners here. This I positioned so it went right to the very bottom of the card like that. And then this we put up on dimensionals, like this. Now before we add these, or add this sentiment layer though, we're gonna do something with this, okay? So we're gonna take our paper snips and we're gonna angle this, but let's first cut it in half. Actually, you know what, we can angle cut it in half. Let's do that. Let's angle cut it in half, and then we can take and put these two pieces together. Oh, I kind of wanted one going the opposite way. Okay, we're gonna have to trim it anyways then. We'll trim it. So we have two pieces kind of going the opposite way of each other. Does that make sense? Okay, then these two, let's add together to each other with a glue dot like this. I'm pushing it down on there and then I'm peeling off the release paper from it. So this will get stuck down like that. And it doesn't matter what this part looks like because it's gonna get tucked under. We just wanna make this look the way we want it to look. We'll add some adhesive to the back sides of that. And as we put this down, we'll tuck this where we want it to go. Just look at the words on there and use those to make sure that it's parallel, you know, the words are parallel to the um, horizontal lines of the card. So we've got that on like that. And then we can take our, um, our sequence and our handy dandy tool here. And we can put a couple sequins. Yeah, I am gonna run out of these. Shoot, I should have invested in these. Okay, we'll put a big one over here like that. There. So before I added the sequins, definitely a masculine card. Afterwards, we got some glitz on there, but guys can use glitz, right? So there's that card. Next one, 
is going to be using, actually these two are just the same. So we will do one of them because there's two that are gonna end up just the same. So we'll do one and then I'll show you a finished from my other stack. So this is gonna get stuck on here like this. We'll just run our adhesive on the back. And we'll go like this, line it up with the edges so it's centered within the top and the bottom. Um, why do I, okay, someone asked, who was that? I have to flip back here, Linda. She said, why do you only put adhesive on the corners and not all the way around the edge? Um, okay, so I have always had success with that. If you feel like you need to use more adhesive, you certainly could, but, um, and I'm using the stamp, uh, the stamp and seal plus, which is like our really strong stuff now. So, um, I have confidence that it's going to stay. You can also, if you're having issues and you want to try to save on adhesive, you can always burnish. You can just go like this and that helps to press that adhesive and really bond it to the cardstock. Um, so you could do that. Just a little tip on that. But yeah, I, I never put my adhesive all the way around. <laughs> all right. Um, after this, we're going to grab these two pieces because again, we would be making two cards that are the same. So for these two pieces, we're going to stamp the thanks, the thanks sentiment. This paper is now causing me issues with sight, so I'm going to move that out of the way. It might be causing issues with your sight too, I don't know, but we don't need it right now. In fact, I don't know if we even need it anymore. I'm going to leave that off. This one gets stamped also the same way. And then we're going to take and put this up onto dimensionals on the front of our card. And then the last thing is to add all of those little flowers. So what I might do, well, no, I'll show you how to do one. So I took these two little points here on the card, those two points, and I lined them up with where the printed and the solid part of the cardstock layer Come into play so I thought that was kind of a nice place to set that these guys are flowers I think they call them vellum flowers um, they are very stiff they're almost plasticky like so to put these on I just stuck adhesive dots on the back sides like that and then with your hands real careful peel off those release paper pieces like that and stick them down. One, two, and I think I used four for each of the cards. So we'll put two more on, stick it down. You could also use like a liquid glue, multi-purpose liquid glue is great for this. Um, it might be quicker. These glue dots are a little putsy, but it is a great way for Stampin' Up! to get adhesive into our kits without making the kits too expensive. So I'm pleased with it. Okay, and we'll stick that one there and this one we'll put over here. And then we'll grab some of these rhinestones again. And I think I used this color on here. I tucked one large one underneath just that edge right there and then I made one small one coming out. I think I put another small one up here, but we'll do a large one because we don't have any small ones left. So we'll do one like that. And maybe we'll do another one down here like that. Okay, and then I'll show you what I did with these. Oops, that one needs another, another sequin. It fell. So that's what they intended to look like. Okay, so you're gonna do two cards that look like that. Okay, we'll put those aside. Now we're going to bring in another vertical card base. So this one here, we're going to grab our bone folder and we're going to grab this envelope piece that looked like this. Add that right to the front. This is a super simple one. Because those sequins and flowers take a while, and you know how to do them now, I'm probably gonna go a little bit faster through the rest of these cards and not necessarily 
finish them, but I'll show you this, the finished sample instead. For this one, I'll use the already um, stitch printed and round circle piece from the kit. I'm gonna stamp again the thanks for being you sentiment. I love round labels because you don't have to get straight. You can just position it straight when you put it on your card. So this one will get dimensionals. And then for this one, I think I used the, the very light yellowy sequins, and you'll see that on the finished card. I centered it uh, left to right and top, so I have about the same distance here, here, and here. And then I added the sequins and the flowers and got this really pretty card. Very fun. All right, for the next two cards, I'm gonna use a vertical card bases. And I'll do one instead of two because they're both pretty much the same, but at least I'll tell you what pieces go with them. So for these, we're gonna use envelope liner pieces again. For one, we're gonna use the jade color. And for the other one, we're gonna use the Calypso coral color. And for each of them, I stamped the Just a Note sentiment um, just slightly below the halfway mark, like that. I did that for each. Might as well do it here since we have the stamp ready. Okay, so those got like this. And then I took out this piece and I shared it be between the two of them. So I grabbed like this, this little one here, this uh, grapefruit, and I started cutting. And I cut about a sixteenth of an inch away around the leaves. And you wanna be careful not to cut into any of the other surrounding leaves, just in case you need them. And in this case, you do need the ones that are right next to this grapefruit piece on that side. Okay, now we're safe to go. But you could use those other ones. Like you could trim off the ones that are just on the side and you can make them come out from an outside edge of your card. So don't throw those away. <laughs> All right, so this gets cut out like this. And then we just add that. And there's two of them, I'll show you where the other one is. So the other one is right here, this piece has those leaves that look really good. And so I just stuck this onto here like that. This is up on dimensionals. So let's go ahead and layer that all together. Put the tape runner on this one. Dimensionals on the next layer. This one did not need sequins, but I did add them later. <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't have because I really, really wanted to show you all of these with all the sequins, but that's okay. I'm just too excited about this. So that's gonna go here. And then this one will just get added. And I added it flat. So I just put a little adhesive on the back side and added it flat like that. You can make these leaves curl up if you want to and just add a few more sequins. And those two cards can look like this when they're done. Okay? I'll have photos of all of these, by the way, on my blog uh, two days from now, on Friday. Okay, the next card is a horizontally positioned card. So you're going to fold it in half, crease it with your bone folder, grab your Mango Melody striped layer, and before we actually add this, we're actually gonna, we're gonna use this too. We're gonna use this envelope layer. So this is the flap, and you're gonna come in and you're gonna trim off all of that adhesive portion of the flap. The part that you lick, right? We wanna get rid of that. So we're just gonna trim that off there, and we'll come in here and trim this off. And I've got about a 16th of an inch of white border around there. And then I kind of put it off center and up a little higher. So we're gonna grab our adhesive. We're gonna put this down like this. Linda, there's where I used a little bit more. <laughs> and we're gonna 
layer that about this far up, about an inch from the bottom. I'm flipping it over and I'm gonna see that I've got it, this line here of the envelope, you can see there's a crease there. I wanna make sure that that's parallel with this, with this line here. And then we can put a little bit more adhesive up here and we can just fold it right over the top. Grab our snips, our paper scissors, and trim off the excess. And that's what that's gonna look like. This is where we um, use our last, our last bit of ribbon. So this gets positioned in the middle, like that. Oh, and I forgot to stamp. I'm getting too excited. I forgot to stamp. So wish me luck, you guys. Hello Sunshine. We're using the Hello Sunshine sentiment stamp. If I made a mistake, there was always the flip side because I could have put this envelope flap over here instead, right? Okay, and this one gets a rib, uh, uh, a little knot, same kind of thing. So you're just going to tie a bow. So you're going to take the two rabbit ears, tie it in a bow, and stick it up here. And this is what that card will look like. You could add sequins if you want. <laughs> the next two cards are just like these. You can see the same pieces. We're gonna use the same flowers, same sequins, only in a different color. And then instead of using those sentiment pieces, because we don't have any more of those, we're gonna take these and we're gonna flip them over. So you have two white banners for your yellow cards, and those cards end up to look like this. And they say Hello Sunshine on them, because they have to, because they're the Mango Melody color, right? All right, so there's that. And then there are two cards left, and they are both vertical position cards. So let's grab these two layers, this is what's left, this is also what's left, and these two, okay? So you're gonna divide those up, you're gonna divide these up, and the way that we divide these up is actually with the trimmer. I forgot, we need the trimmer one more time. We're gonna pull this in, and we're gonna trim this diagonally. It's gonna go, it's gonna start about a half of an inch up from this side. I'm gonna mark it with a pencil so you can see. So about a half of an inch up from that side and a half an inch down from that side. So if you position them in your trimmer like that and you slice, oops, there we go. You have two pieces that look like this. A little bit more fussy cutting will give you a fun little accent to your card. So you just come in and you trim again about a sixteenth of an inch away, all the way around. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing, I don't think. Okay, we're gonna stamp way to go on each of these. Here's our way to go. So these are congratulatory cards. You can interchange your sentiments. They don't have to be the same ones that I used. You could even use a different stamp set too if you wanted to. But now we have our way to go. We have this piece here, and oops, I think I put that one on this one here. This one on there, and then you have some sequins, and this just gets layered like this. This gets stuck down like that, and this piece is gonna go up on dimensionals, and you get these results. So you get cards that look like this. And those two cards, I think, are my most favorite of all of them. So you can see the dimensional is right under the label piece there. Let's pull them all in. And before I do, I better shut my ink pad because we don't want to get ink on anything. We'll move our stamps off to the side. You guys ready to see them all? All right, sorry I didn't get to complete them all in front of you. But man, I guess that would have taken a little bit longer than a half an hour. <laughs> all right. Here we go. We have a clear spot ready to go. I'm gonna zoom out just a tad so we can fit a lot of these in here. So we have those two. I'm gonna zoom out even more. We have these 
two. We have these two up here. So how many is that? Six so far? Here's another one. These two that look like that. Another one that looks like this. Can we fit them all in the camera? <laughs> I'm having fun. Those two. Oh, my head's in the way. I'll put this one up here. <laughs> Zoom out even more. <laughs> Can we do that? Let's see. Let's push them up a little bit higher. And these two. Did we get them all in? This one you can't see very well. I'll stick it down here. <laughs> or here, we'll trade places. We'll trade places with that one because that one is only stamped on the top. Crazy, right? Crazy. We got 15 cards kind of all done in this hour. <laughs> so again, you can triple the cards in this all-inclusive kit. That way you don't have to worry about buying multiple kits to make more cards, especially if you love fruit-themed cards. Um, these are just so perfect for summer too here in North America in the US. Okay, so let me um, do some prizes, prize stuff right now too. We want to make sure that we're getting all that in. Um, okay, let me go to my website really quick. So if you are at stampyourartout.com, I want to point out something that is going away soon. Um, underneath my classes tab, if you click on this tutorials for sale tab, you're going to find that there is a tutorial that you can have access to. It's called the Ornate Garden Mega Tutorial Bundle. There's 90 tutorials in here using, and let's see if I've got it pulled up. Yes, the Ornate Garden suite of products. So all these products are used on all 90 of these projects. So myself and 89 other demonstrators demonstrators collaborated together and um, to make this bundle. It's $21 in the US. So if you're interested, you can purchase it. Um, it will be made available after this month, but during this month and the last couple months, you can earn it for free just by placing an order. And the way that you place an order is you go to my blog, you click on the shop tab, um, you can go to my online store, or if you're already on, like, say, the home page, there's a shop, line, shop online button. So wherever you can find that shop button, it's going to take you to the online store. You're going to place an order, and then this is the key, and a lot of people aren't doing this. They're forgetting that there is a host code. So um, let's see if I bring this back to here. Maybe you can see the host code better. It's JQEGH3MS right now during this time. Um, that host code changes kind of mid-month every month. So I'm calling it a June host code, but it will travel on into July. But if you use a host code, any host code, like if you're in a club and you use a host code, you're gonna get that tutorial bundle for free. So it's simple. You just use, to ho use a host code, that's all you need to do. Okay, so let's go on to the prizes. Prizes from last week. Sorry, I've disappeared, haven't I? Sorry about that. Prizes from last week are, where are they? Oh, here we go. We had some extra fast fuse left over from about a year ago. So you get a, a cartridge and a refill. So some great strong adhesive that um, these winners are going to get. So let me pull up that so people can see who we are announcing. This is from last week, uh, the last week 3D Peony and Diamonds card, I called it. And the winners from YouTube and from Facebook commenters are Les Shaw and Nancy Baldy. Congratulations to both of you. You get this, uh, the Fast Fuse stuff. So what is the prize for this week? All right, let me pull those out. This is going to be really helpful <clears throat> if you have someone in your family who could use some extra blocks, especially here. Let's move this out of the way, you guys. Especially if you are um, someone who's going to get this kit anyways. Let's say you're going to buy this citrus kit. Well, you're going to get a block like this. You're going to get sheets of adhesive. <laughs> you're going to get a stamp set. 
But now look, you can have two stamp sets. So somebody can craft with you. I know, it's crazy. I just, I bought too many kits for this. And you're gonna get an ink spot with it. And I will find another thing of glue dots somewhere for this person. But those are the prizes. So a stamp set, a block, which everybody can use, an ink spot, which everybody can use. They travel well too, and they're great for the Stamparatus. Um, which is a positioning tool and then adhesive hello who cannot use adhesive right so those are the prizes for this video and we're gonna draw a winner live right now so let me pull that up onto the computer so that we can grab our link okay so comment make sure you're commenting everybody we're gonna take that screen and move it okay we are ready all right, so here's where you all are right now. You're at Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel on Facebook, and we are going to click on videos. And when we grab that link, we're going to put it in this app called Comment Picker and draw a winner, okay? So I hope that you can use that. You don't even have to buy the kit if you don't want to. You can just have that awesome fruit stamp set and make some cards. So let's grab the link from this live. Here we go. Copy the link. Put it into our comment picker app get comments i'm sorry i went way over time today everybody 199 of you commented today thank you holy moly all right let's click the start button <laughs> love all the ads on here right and the winner is edna erickson <laughs> congrats to you edna all right so we have a winner from today yay Congratulations, Edna. Um, and I think I actually do have your address on hand, so I will send that to you directly. Those two others that won, will you please reach out to me? I sometimes have a hard time reaching out to everybody. Um, I can't always find you on Facebook or you don't respond when I comment on your comment on YouTube. By the way, if you wanna watch this on YouTube later on, I did make another little overlay. Look at that, watch me on YouTube. You can just find me by searching for my name, Rachel Tessman. Um, I will have this up on my blog on Friday, which is the 19th of June. So you can see the measurements all there again, or you can rewatch this video and take a screenshot. <laughs> um, I'll also have close up photos of everything so you can um, take and see everything up close and in depth. And what else do I want to tell you? Next week, June 24th, is when I'll do my next live. Um, I think that's it. Congratulations to the winners and thank you all for staying with me this whole time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.